so thank you very much for that. We are going to have a break for morning tea after we've heard from Barry Doyle, who's just going to take us through a little bit of the practicalities of what's happening here in Western Australia. But I, I really want you to think about our speakers this morning too, and the speakers we're going to hear from 10.30, because we are going to have a panel discussion and we want you to be part of that discussion too, because as uh, Dr. Jim O'Connell is saying, it's a team approach. It's not an individual, it's a team approach. So everything that you have to offer is valuable to assisting those just under 10,000 people here in Western Australia have a better existence. Barry Doyle, would you like to join us now with your thoughts? Please make him welcome. Thanks, Verdi. Um, I suppose the first thing I'm going to say is that um, this presentation is going to be nowhere as good as the last one. <laughs> so, you know, it is an impossible act to follow. I'm not even going to try. Um, the, uh, look, what I want to do actually today is just two things. Um, first of all, I want to talk about and refer to some of these structural issues in a kind of a state of the nation snapshot of housing, homelessness, and the whole box and dice, and it's been referred to here a few times. Um, I'm uh, not going to speak for long, it's just actually the purpose of it is to just get people thinking about um, some of the issues and how it all fits together. Um, and that's uh, about, I suppose, uh, one of the things that I wanted to see in the conference today, which is um, a lot of uh, talk and debate coming from here rather than up here. Um, and, uh, you know, so there's going to be panels today and then we're going to have the great debate um, afterwards. Um, so it would be interesting if everyone can stick around for that. That's the first thing. The second thing I want to do is to show you one of the products that we created for the week, um, which is a um, video or infographic animation, whatever they're called. Um, and um, the team at Chukwa um, spent a lot of time putting it together, and we think it's a fine piece of work. Um, and we're delighted to say that the city of Perth and, uh, well, I think it's just the city of Perth, actually, um, are showing it on those big screens around the city throughout the week. Um, and, uh, you know, so if you're down in Northbridge, as I'm sure many of you will be this Saturday night or whatever, um, uh, you can go and have a look. All right, so I just want to talk, I'm just going to actually flick through slides, Alan Kohler style, and just talk a little bit about what's happening. That's Thomas the Tank Engine. I was looking for Henry, but I couldn't find him. Um, yeah, look, this is a familiar story, so I won't spend too much too long on it, except to say these are the kind of the causal cascading links of uh, uh, rising house prices, rising rents, and the attendant effect on demand for social housing. Um, so as house pro prices rose and rents rose, um, we've seen people in the lowest uh, income uh, deciles, or indeed quintiles, um, uh, going to the state effectively for a solution to their housing need. Um, uh, there is a slight good news story here, which is the fact that um, for much of the last year, the vacancy rate um, in the private rental market has been increasing. <clears throat> um, we really were doing a tough uh, around the middle of 2012 when the vacancy rate was down below 2%. Um, but uh, recently, um, the vacancy rate's been increasing, so it's up at 4%, I believe, based on the REWA figures. It's uh, increased over 30% in the last um, uh, in the last, er, sorry, in 2014, um, even though that it could be a sign of deteriorating broader economic fundamentals and people leaving the state. But this will um, uh, have an effect on rents coming down. Unfortunately, uh, rents increased uh, so much in the, um, in the upswing that they would have to come down a lot, uh, a lot more before you'd uh, uh, be reaching affordability levels for, for people on low incomes. Um, yeah, and uh, well, uh, nationally, um, even though house prices are starting to come down a little bit now in WA, um, our house prices, um, unusually after the financial crisis, um, went up after a, a very low, um, um, sorry, uh, off a very high base already. Um, so it took a little bit of a dip off the GFC. After the GFC, the fiscal and monetary levers were pulled. Sentiment didn't seem to take too much of a hit. Um, in fact, we seem to have an investor bull rush over East. Um, and, uh, you know, so house prices are going up at a time when they took a dip elsewhere, although they're starting to stabilize for various reasons. Um, that's Perth. Uh, yeah, we took a bit of a dip back up in 2013, according to the ABS figures. Again, low interest rates takes a big part in that. Um, starting to take another dip now, and I think the activity in the private rental market is a bellwether of that. 
as is um, some indicators, migration into the state is starting to abate a bit, and migration out of the state is starting to increase. Um, first time buyers, on the other hand, um, and this is interesting stuff, um, even though this data is a little incomplete, I'll move to this one. Um, first time buyer activity, unusually in Australia, is quite high in WA. Um, about 20% of the market is first time buyers. Um, over east, it's gone to disastrous new lows. Um, but uh, they're paying more for those houses. Um, so, uh, you know, you're going to, I think it's a record high now, Michael was looking at the stats, my colleague Michael, a record high for established properties. The Department of Treasury gets this data from the number of people who apply for first time honor grants. The only problem is it doesn't apply to new bills. Um, but effectively, um, you know, as you can see, we're at a, a stage when the cash rate is so low and that obviously increases people's ability to borrow and that has an inflationary effect, uh, effect on house prices. Um, yeah, and we're still in this situation um, where house price to income ratios in Australia and an international metric are extremely high. Um, according to that data that was released by the IMF, the IMF a couple of months ago, we're talking uh, the second highest in the world after Belgium. Um, you know, so that means that effectively um, below the, uh, or relative to the historical average of house prices, um, uh, uh, our housing is um, overpriced and overvalued. Public housing wait list and average wait times. Um, the minister referred to the state affordable housing strategy earlier on. I'm going to return to that. Um, but basically, this is the situation we're at now. Um, you will see that the public housing wait list uh, hit its peak around 2009, 2010, has been dropping back since. Some of that is down to people being housed. Other parts of it are, are down to the wait list actually being rationalized by the tightening up of eligibility criteria. Now, you can argue the toss as to whether that's the correct thing to do or not the correct thing to do, but um, it suffices to say that those numbers have not dropped uh, in the main because people have been moved off the, house, uh, the wait list into houses. Um, and in fact, the waiting times uh, are, are, have increased, um, as you can see on the red line there, and they're due to increase even more. Um, this is one of the fundamental problems we have. Um, we decided to take part in the uh, globally synchronized housing boom, um, and uh, we didn't have a social housing system to uh, really uh, uh, cater for the fact that this creates defined winners and losers, the losers, of course, being the people that um, are on low incomes. So we're on about 4% social housing stock, which is well uh, below the uh, OECD average and, 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 and well below what most European countries and even the United States and I think in Canada would have. Um, state affordable housing strategy, um, we're talking about it for just a second, although I'm getting signals here, but um, the, uh, yeah, I, I mean, I've been working on this for about six years, I've been on this beat, and I remember when the Social Housing Task Force was formed, it was really about public housing and social housing, and it's kind of metamorphosed into something else for good or ill. But this is basically what the Social Housing Task Force final report, which was the forerunner of the State Affordable Housing Strategy said in 2009. Um, blah, 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 blah. But we're reviewing the acute shortage of public housing in Western Australia to suggest innovative strategies for addressing the problem. So there's a clear idea there that the problem was social housing and not enough of it. Five years later, the department is working tirelessly to improve affordability across the housing continuum. Dun, 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 dun. The strategy of 20,000 new housing opportunities um, which is something else, it seems to me, um, uh, and that comes true in some of the data. So this is basically where we're at uh, right now. Um, NRAS has produced nine, uh, well, nearly 2,000 properties, which is a great result, um, but of course the, the feds have canned it now. Um, so we'll get a few more houses after the previous round, but there won't be a new round. Social housing, much of that is what we got delivered through stimulus. Um, not all of it, but much of it. Um, and three or four years after the publication of this strategy, we still don't have a detailed community housing growth plan um, as part of a broader social housing uh, uh, growth plan, which seems to me to, to undermine the strategy uh, to a sig significant degree. And then we have Key Start, which is obviously a program that, um, uh, that um, uh, predates the state affordable housing strategy, um, and which is about uh, obviously selling properties to people on... Um, uh, moderate to low incomes. And look, you know, while laudable, it's, it, it's a social good that people who would otherwise be frozen out of the housing market can buy houses, but it's really got nothing to do with public or social housing. Because if you're poor enough to be in social housing, you're not rich enough to own it, to get a key start loan. 
and that's effectively it. Um, there is no causal link between key start loans and um, issuing key start loans and alleviating pressure on the social housing system. Um, this is where we're going in terms of investment, so it's not looking good really, we're kind of dipping below the trend again, um, and this is something that's happening all over, all over the country. Um, in fact, Western Australia hasn't been too bad, and some of the other states uh, over east, um, they took the social housing monies and then basically, um, or sorry, the stimulus monies, and then went, went below uh, trend, well below trend in terms of future spending on, on, on public housing. Uh, this is what uh, wait times are projected to increase. I think we're already over these wait times, but basically this is what the government effect is, think is going to happen with wait times, and was they're going to increase. Um, and that's it. And before I, um, yeah, I think if I just, do I have to press play, Rebecca, or what do I have to do? Okay, so anyway, the point of all that is that's just to get the old juices flowing when we get into the debates later on today and to provide some context. 